drinking more coffee today. First of all, thank you for staying with us. We have lots of plans and I'm very excited about all of it. I, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, what we plan to do next, what will be our next project, apart from the fact that we have been uh, doing game development stuff for three or four months. Apparently we switched gears and now we are doing something else. I believe that's a part of the creative process, for better or for worse. Still better than procrastination. On a side note, I'm very excited about ray tracing and how it goes real time. If you were afraid that your blender ray tracing skills or whatever become irrelevant, don't be afraid. The history of rendering is happening right in front of our eyes. Abstract and general technique plus hardware beats our efforts to optimize it with rasterization and all that stuff. Eventually, ray tracing will win. It's time to go home and I will show you a little bit of space VFX then. So good news for you guys, we decided to venture beyond space and time to bring you some quality content. So if you are enthusiastic about science fiction, visual effects and maybe even scientific visualization of space, it will be a sequel to space VFX. First results are pretty encouraging and you know what, let me show you something. Of course there are some problems and roadblocks and some issues that we have to tackle and so let's not be overexcited about it yet. Basically, while we were recording Space VFX a year ago, there were some things and some areas of Blender and some effects like volumetric nebulae that we thought were simply impossible to even try to approach in Blender. Maybe because we were pretty inexperienced in this particular area of Blender and things have changed over the year. I wonder, have you seen the work of Tion van der Zalm? If you've seen it, let's put it straight, it is insane. And uh, uh, as far as we knew, uh, the tech that makes it possible, the software, there was no practical way to implement it in Blender. I mean, the key to this style is usually particle simulation rendered in something like Krakatoa. If you haven't heard about it, Krakatoa is a software designed to process and render millions and even billions of particles. Tune said he was inspired with Krakatoa and Fume FX combo, but in the end he used Houdini and Pyro FX. Anyway, usually the volumetric structures like this one involve literally billions of particles. For example, in this Star Trek Nebula tutorial by Ala Nalawi, the figure of uh, 1.2 billion is mentioned, I believe. Well, actually, it's 1.1, it doesn't matter. Just let it sink in. And you can imagine, this crazy particle count goes on top of already pretty detailed fume effect, smoke simulation or something like that, and usually this is achieved in Houdini or 3ds Max or Maya by either using smoke simulation or some procedural noise fields. So initially, when we tried to replicate all of this stuff in Blender, uh, we became very sad, like really unbelievably sad. Okay, among other methods being used to simulate stuff like that is uh, the volume displacement feature of Arnold render engine, for example. But unfortunately, that was one of these features that Blender was missing, and in fact is missing, but maybe not for too long. So that process of converting that style of volumetric nebula rendering into Blender is not straightforward by any means. So we've been doing a ton of research and talking to Blender professionals and not only Blender, but all people across the board that we can talk to. Uh, Gottfried Hoffman from Blender Diplom shared a pretty cool approach involving point density on top of smoke simulation and particles. After that we saw the light at the end of the tunnel when we tried to use the procedural noises without smoke simulation. So yeah, I guess uh, so far the most fruitful attempts have been related to hardcore procedural techniques uh, in cycles, I mean. In EV it's a whole different story altogether. Funny enough, after we posted some work in progress renders to Instagram, I believe, uh, we got an encouraging comment from Tion van der Zalm. And while I think it was just a friendly tap on the shoulder, uh, we still appreciate it very much. We're coming for you, Tion. Alright, I doubt that we will achieve that level of quality, but we will try, you know. So I feel that it kind of started to come together piece by piece. Uh, there are many things to solve, but it's the point uh, where we started to become excited about the possibility of flying our nerd ship in outer space and bringing you guys some tutorials about creating 
Volumetric nebulae in Blender we think the world is ready. Right, of course, many things have to align to make it happen. Uh, for example, performance is a huge issue, uh, especially for animations. Volumetric shaders and probably particles and simulations are no joke. Some hacks like denoising, uh, maybe super resolution using neural networks work surprisingly well, uh, but not for animations yet. And some of this stuff works only with NVIDIA GPUs, hopefully while Space VFX 2 is in production. Uh, Real-time ray tracing will grow some muscles and become uh, truly real-time, fingers crossed, or at least we hope that it will allow to accelerate cycles even more. And of course we will use Blender 2.8 before you asked, both cycles and EV, alright? And we're gonna be sharing updates along the way, so feel free to follow me, Pleb Alexandrov, or AD Burroughs on Twitter, drink more coffee and we will change the world of computer graphics. Anyway, eventually neural networks will do it for us and you will lose your job anyway. But maybe it's not that bad of a thing. I think losing a job is an ultimate goal of every reasonable creature. Like, how can we do a meaningful creative work without losing a job first? <laughs>